My permission to choke her. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> Let's hear it for the boy. Let's hear it for my baby. Samantha, could I see you over here a minute? <laughs> What's with you? Your boyfriend, Jeffrey. Ever since he gave you that record, it's all we've been hearing. Get real, Katie. I haven't even kissed him yet. <laughs> you haven't kissed anybody yet. <laughs> I don't butt into your private life. Whoa! Now, you're too young to know about Katie's private life. <laughs> We're all too young to know about Katie's private life. Uh, Nell, can I talk to you alone? Honey, not now. I really want to finish the laundry. Come on. Nell, she just wants to tell you that she's not in love with Jeffrey. And he's not too old for her, even though he's 18 and drives a white van. Let's talk. <laughs> Now, what is this about you dating an 18-year-old with a love boat on wheels? Well, he's this real neat guy, but he had an argument with his father. His father threw his suitcase out the window and Jeffrey out the front door. Said he never wanted to see him again as long as he lived. How could a father do that to his own son? Yeah. He's been living in his van for a month. A month? And I was wondering if he could use our shower. Honey, if I were him, I wouldn't wait a minute longer. <laughs> I knew you'd say it was okay. Where is he now, honey? Upstairs in the shower. <laughs> it's good to know I'm still in charge around here. Hey, Aunt Mel! Guess what? The mail got here and look what the chief sent me. Ow! 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 What is it? We sent a fish show up home set and a magnifying glass. Boy, the chief sent it all the way from Scotland Yard. What do you think? <laughs> I think, Sherlock, that you should go upstairs and try to solve the case of the missing socks. And here's your first clue. They will match the five single socks I have in the dirty laundry. Great, Aunt Nell, my first case! Missing socks! Not so fast, baby. Why was Jeffrey thrown out of his house? Well, his stepmother doesn't like him. And she turned his father against him. He's not going back home until he can prove to his father he can make it on his own. And he will. Oh. You like him a lot, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> well, just how did you meet him anyway? It was fate. <laughs> I squeegeed him. <laughs> I beg your pardon? At the school charity car wash. I was on Bucket and Squeegee that day. Then he drove in. My, my, my. You know, I have tried singles bars, <laughs> church socials, swap meets, but never once did I think of a car wash. Say, no. I was in the garage just now, and I heard a man's voice singing in the shower. Is that something we should check into? No, it's just one of Sam's friends. Oh, thank heaven. I thought we had a problem with one of the girls. <laughs> Let's hear it for the boy. Let's hear it for my baby. <laughs> now, what? Jeffrey has this interview at the supermarket at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. It's so early. Could he sleep on the couch tonight? Did you already tell him he could? Yeah. 
See there? I'm still in charge. <laughs> oh, by the way, did I invite him to stay for dinner? And breakfast. At six o'clock in the morning, are you crazy? <laughs> Boy, that show felt great. Hi, I'm Jeff Hamilton. <laughs> And you must be now. Wow. <laughs> you're not quite what I expected. Well, you're everything I expected. Does Sam ever love you? Get out of here. <laughs> and I love Samantha. <laughs> Keep your hands off her. <laughs> hey, it's tough, but no problem. You're cute. Uh, Jeff, Nell said you could sleep on the couch tonight. Oh, no, you've done enough for me already. I don't want to impose. Impose? No, how could you impose? Listen, put some clean linen on your father's bed. He can spend the night in the chief's room. It's only for one night. Wow, thanks, Nell. Well, okay, but only on one condition, that I work it off for you. I'm good at carpentry, I can mow the lawn, wash your dishes, and I'm a great mechanic. Oh, you know what? You're gonna love my French toast in the morning. <laughs> I always get up at 5.30. <laughs> to get myself a squeegee. Wow, she sure is fantastic. You know, Sam, I'm really lucky to know someone like you. You are? And when I get a job, I'm going to put a little money away. And do you know where we'll go? Where? Acapulco. Really? You know, I have a lot of money saved up already. Oh, no. When we go, it's going to be with my money. But I could help. I have $253.37 in the bank. I've been saving since I was a kid. You think Nell will be in the kitchen for a while? I don't know why. I don't know, just asked. Um, do you want a cookie? No. I think I do. I kind of like being alone with you. Yeah, me too. Still want a cookie? I hate cookies. <laughs> Thanks. I'll see you later. I fixed the knob on the closet door now. Oh, Jeffrey, you have done so much around here in the past week. Thank you. Oh, I haven't done that much. Mow the lawn, fix the door. Oh, by the way, I fixed the vacuum cleaner upstairs. Oh, listen, there is something you can do for me. I forgot to pick up something at the market. Do you think you could watch spaghetti sauce in the stove for me? Well, I'll drive down for you. What'd you forget to buy? The spaghetti. <laughs> Give me the money. I'll be right back. OK, thank you. You know what? You are a lifesaver. No problemo. Oh, no, could you give me a few more bucks for gas? I'm flat broke. You know what I mean? Of course I know what you mean. Here you go. There you go. Thanks. You know, it's a shame a nice kid like that can't get a job. Why should he get a job? He gets money from you. <laughs> and just what is that supposed to mean? Oh, he doesn't need money for gas. He's a phony. He is not. Bet you a dollar. <laughs> Joey. There is one thing people have always admired about me, and that is that I am a wonderful judge of character. Want to make it two dollars? <laughs> Where did you get two dollars from, Joey? Oh, from our bet yesterday. <laughs> our bet? Yeah, when you bet me that we wouldn't be in the store long enough to need a dime for the parking meter. <laughs> How was I supposed to know the meter maid was standing behind me? <laughs> I knew. <laughs> I'm going to take you up on your bed just to teach you a lesson, young man. If Jeff had been trying to hustle us, he would have hit on everybody in his family for gas money. I gave him 10 bucks. I gave him 20. I'm in for 22.50. Double or nothing, Aunt Nell? Whatever happened to that job Jeff was going to get at the supermarket? Yeah, I never mentioned it again. Face it, Nell. Jeffy's been with us one week. All he's done is charm the pants off you and a pair of pajamas off me. <laughs> oh, 
Lord, what have we gotten ourselves into? And what has Samantha gotten herself into? A white van that sleeps four. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Oh, yeah, I need to go back to my coloring. Something wrong? Jeff, did you have enough gas to get to the store? Sure. Did Julie's 10 help? Katie's 20, Grandpa's 22.50. Hey, I'm keeping track of every penny in my room upstairs. That is not your room. That's the chief's room. The room you were supposed to spend one night in until you got that job. What job? That job. Oh, that job. I didn't get it. On the way to the interview, my van broke down. Probably overloaded with gas. <laughs> You're beginning to sound just like my father. I am beginning to like your father. <laughs> Listen, Jeffrey, as far as you and Samantha are concerned, you are history. I want you packed and out of this house in five minutes. Got it? Got it. Oh, Nell, you don't have a suitcase I could borrow, do you? <laughs> Dad broke mine throwing it out the window. No suitcase, Jeffrey. Oh, and Jeffrey, your pajamas belong to Grandpa. Oh. oh. Well, then I guess I have nothing to pack. <laughs> well, at least he did one nice thing. He fixed the closet. <laughs> Now. Samantha, please stop juggling the meatballs. <laughs> I told him to leave. I also told him I didn't want him to see you anymore. Honey, he was taking advantage of this whole family, especially you. That's not true. It is true, Samantha. You're lying. Listen, you don't know what you're talking about. No, you don't know how Samantha, I feel. Samantha, listen to me. But I love him, Samantha. Samantha. I love him. I hate you. <sighs> Stay. Calm, Nell. The kid is gonna go upstairs and she's gonna cry her little eyes out, but then she's gonna be okay. Are you crazy? Talk to her! <laughs> Nell, what's with Sam? She's upset, but I'm going to talk to her. Well, you better hurry. What? She's going to Acapulco with Jeff. Don't be crazy. He doesn't have enough money to go to Mexico. No, but Samantha does. She just got in his van and she's got her bank book with her. Samantha! Sam oh, my God. What have I done? I just sent a 15-year-old girl off to Acapulco with an 18-year-old boy. Gee, I hope they know enough to stay at the Las Flores Hotel. They've got a great beach. Oh. Acapulco. That's Mexico. That's a foreign country. She's got to come back. Look, stop worrying now. If we're lucky, maybe she won't go all the way with Jeff. <laughs> Katie, don't help. Look, I think we should call Daddy. He'll know what to do. Why would he know what to do when he's in England? Doesn't know what to do when he's here. You're right. Besides, he would only worry. Look, then maybe we should call the police. What? I can just see tomorrow's headlines. Police chief's 15-year-old daughter flees to Mexico. Huh. Then what are we going to do? Suppose she does go all the way with Jack. <laughs> I'm talking about Acapulco. No. Besides, that would be the last resort. I don't think so, Nell. There's a club bed further south. <laughs> Somebody stop her from talking. Oh, sure. Try to help. I can't win. Kate, I'm sorry. I, I, honey, I don't know why I'm yelling at you. I'm the one that ran Sam away. It, this is all my fault. No, it isn't, Nell. Katie helped. Me? Yes, you and Julie both. Teasing each other. Samantha is sensitive. You should know that by now. You're right, Aunt Nellie. Tease me and I'm sensitive. <laughs> you sure are sensitive, baby. Now butt out! <laughs>
Well, screaming at each other and feeling guilty isn't going to help things at all. I... Oh, that's her. I know it is. Oh, Lord, let it be her. Hello? Hello, now? <laughs> Dude, uh, it's the chief. It's the chief. He knows the map is gone. He knows. How could he know he's in England? But he's at Scotland Yard. They have a way of finding out these things. <laughs> Fine, fine. Julie wants to say hi. Look, you talk to your father about anything but Samantha, or you'll be living in the garage. <laughs> Here's Julie. Hi, Daddy. Everything is fine. That's good, sweetheart. And Katie wants to say hi. Hold on. Remember, one word about Samantha, and you'll be living in the car in the garage. Here's Katie. Hi, Dad. Everything is fine. <laughs> nice to hear your voice, honey. Listen, you, you get on the kitchen phone and one word about Samantha, just remember, it is very damp in the garage. <laughs> Katie and Julie are getting on the kitchen phone. Where's Samantha? Oh, she's spending the night with a friend. Nell, stop whipping yourself. <laughs> oh, Papa. I keep forgetting she's not my baby anymore, that she's... she's growing up. If I had talked to her, I would have known how she felt. Grandpa, I love Samantha. I don't want to see her hurt. Nell, I'd like to give you a few words of wisdom, something that'll... Heal your mind in this moment of crisis. Oh, Grandpapa, thank you. What is it? I don't know. I can't think of a damn thing. Boy, that conversation with Daddy was so boring. But why didn't you talk about what's happening in your life? That's what we were talking about. <laughs> Look, why don't we watch TV like we do every night? And if Sam isn't home, by midnight, we will call the police. You're right, Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> Right, okay. <laughs> Hello? Samantha! Baby, are you all right? Huh? You're crying. Don't tell me you're not crying when I can hear you crying! <laughs> what? Where are you, baby? I'll be right there. Poor baby. He took her money and then he dumped her on the beach. Oh. But I think you're old enough for your first cup of coffee. Okay? Coffee. Good morning. Um, two coffees, please. I'll have milk. One milk, two coffees. <laughs> Want to talk about it? 
I don't understand, Nell. Of course you don't understand. How could he just leave me like that? When he kissed me, I thought we had something special. You did have something special. But you felt it and he didn't. But we were going to go to Acapulco to live. He said he could make money by diving for sponges. <laughs> sponges he'd know about. It's not like that, no. I know, I know. I'm never going to see him again. <laughs> I feel bad about that, too. I would love to see him one more time. <laughs> Went to Tijuana. Then he said he was going to join the Navy. You know, I begged to go with him. But you know what he said? He said I have it made. He said I have a great family. And I have somebody to take care of me. And he said he didn't have anything. He did have something. He had the best. He had you and didn't even know it. One milk and two coffees. <laughs> anything else? <laughs> uh, honey, you should put something on your stomach. How about a couple of Danish? I'll have a donut. <laughs> two Danish and a donut. <laughs> Feel any better? I don't think I'll ever feel better. It's all part of being a woman. Well, I think love stinks. Oh, no, it doesn't. This is just your first love, and believe me, there will be others. Look at me. I keep trying. <laughs> Why do you keep trying? Because when it's right, it's really right. But you'll have to find it out for yourself. Two Danish and a donut. <laughs> Some people never get it right. Now, well, let's go home. No. I'll love Jeff as long as I live. I I'll know. never love anybody else. I know. I know. Let's go. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> 